we go about our daily lives, we're constantly shedding data about ourselves. For example, my watch is telling Apple that I've been sitting at my desk for three days. And vacuuming up all this data is artificial intelligence with new tools like ChatGPT. And now it's got its hands on Māori. This is the first time I'm using ChatGPT, so I'm excited but also very curious. So let's give it a go. Where did Te Reo Māori originate from? Whoa. Whoa. I'm impressed that it gave me some Māori words, Māori sentences that kind of make sense. What is the purpose of the Māori Language Week? Not bad, it's answering the question, but it's giving me gibberish. How do I score it? Out of 10, I reckon it's a generous three. Now, I was giving it some tough questions. Others think it's pretty good for where it is. The language experts I've spoken to have rated it probably 7 out of 10 at this stage. Looking at the progress and development of AI, um, it won't be long before it will be fluent. AI could be an amazing tool for Māori. Imagine every iwi having their own local version of ChatGPT. What is the name of this mountain? What is the name of this river? Or why is this particular ancestor significant to my family? It should be able to regenerate responses from an iwi perspective and the voice of a traditional elder. What we need to do is to work with iwi and their data so that they can control the language model. And there is one iwi that does have that ability, of course, that's Tehiku Media. Rongo is a pronunciation app, so we developed a Māori language pronunciation API. Whakarongo mai, he kereru te nā manu, kōrero mai. Kereru. Kapai. But crucial to all of this is the idea of Māori data sovereignty. We could end up having American companies decide how te reo Māori is going to be used, who can access te reo Māori, and even charge us for, for the right to speak our own language. So is there a safeguard? There might well be. One idea is a kaitiakitanga licence, which can be applied across all data used by AI. We don't need one person telling us all how it's going to be. What we're saying is seek permission. Don't just access or harvest Indigenous data. The path ahead for Te Reo has to include Māori guardianship. It's important for Māori to protect Māori data because Māori understand what's important to Māori. Well, yeah, three out of ten for accuracy. I know. Any concerns? Uh, I have a few concerns. I, I do see some positives, but the concerns for me is Te Reo isn't, you know, an instant. You, you don't just access it instantly. You have to feel that pain. It's a journey of a lifetime. Uh -huh. So, you know, for something like AI to just spit something out like that, you don't actually get the essence or the soul or the deep depth of the right. understanding of Te Reo. Because English... Language is just the language, you can learn the language, and that's true of many sort of European languages. But uh, the way Mike McRoberts was explaining it to me the other day, and the way I've heard it explained, is that it's actually just kind of one strand of a few different things that, that make up Te Ao Māori, right? And you need all that stuff together. Well, yeah, Te Reo is the gateway to the right. Māori world, you know, to, in order to fully uh, even... Well, no one can ever fully understand Te Reo, not even the most native of speakers oh. that, that exist right now that or that are alive. So, But it gives you a glimpse into Māori world. And Māori world, I mean indigenous, indigeneity. So for something like that to have have so much information, like a repository of every tribal dialect, every generation's um, knowledge systems. You know, we're going back 500 years, I suppose. It's it's quite a dangerous, you know, when I yeah. think about it, it's quite dangerous, you know, when it falls into someone's hands, like, or a robot. Who who owns the so, uh, who owns totally. that? And really, like the water, like the air, Māori don't believe anyone should own anything, but it should be passed on to generations. We're also oral people. Our histories, we pass on whakapapa, that's all sacred, and we pass that from one generation to another. So you lose the connection. That's where I'm concerned. I don't really trust in it, which is, is why I gave it a three, but also because it was literally just saying gibberish in Māori, and I was yeah. like, you know, I was excited to see Māori, 
but also I was like, okay, it's not actually giving me. So it doesn't also it. reference sources where it gets its information from, which is detrimental in our model. It'd be very interesting to see what happens, and I'd love for um, some of the, um, the work you're talking about here, protecting the language, to then be used as a blueprint for everyone else in the world trying to work out how to regulate and protect ourselves from AI. Absolutely, we'll it's a good it, source sure. for um, revitalisation. There's a lot of, I think, 7,000 Indigenous languages left in the world, yeah. you know, and every day there's at least 70 dying, you know, death. They're on the brink of extinction. Māori is an endangered language, so it, it can be a great resource for that, but it's just about, you know, making sure there are good protections in okay. place.